So you know all about the Radio City Music Hall, big shindig, the fundraiser that they had there just a, a week or two ago, and they raised some $25 million, a really, really big deal. Everybody was so excited, high-fiving each other, and uh, no sooner was this going down than Joe Scarborough was trying to highlight how little money, he's an anchor over on MSNBC in the morning, he was trying to highlight how little money Trump had. Well, there are a few things that just went down over the weekend that really kind of make him look pretty shameful. And if I were him, I'd be kind of embarrassed. Not that he's embarrassed. I'm sure he so doesn't care. But I want you to at least, I've showed you this before. So if you've seen it, bear with me. If you haven't, you need to watch it because this is the guy on Morning Joe making fun of Trump for not having any money for his campaign. I always tell my kids, if things look like they're too good to be true, they're too good to be true. And if you're looking at something that just doesn't make sense, you know, there's a reason. And here, we're looking at something that makes no sense. This guy is getting crazier by the day. He's got no money. The campaign is just broke. People don't want to give money. He's down 200,000 contributors to where he was this time in the cycle four years ago. Biden's raised $71 million. People are begging, literally begging, literally begging. And any idiot that runs some like podcast, no, we just can't that. they're begging. They're calling contributors and saying, how can I help? I want to write checks for Joe Biden. Put that number up again. <laughs> what, what did Tip O'Neill say about money in politics? Uh, it's the mother's milk of politics. <laughs> and right now, Joe Biden's got all he wants. And Donald Trump oh, is yeah? a little thirsty. I'm not so sure about that. If it is the mother's milk of politics, which, by the way, I don't agree with, especially in this modern day, I would just say then uh, <clears throat> Biden might start to get a little bit worried. So you saw the $71 million that Joe Scarborough posted. Well, that was prior to the $25 million event there in New York City. So if my math is correct, you're looking at $96 million bucks. So just shy of $100 million there for the Biden campaign. Now, if Joe's math is correct, and Trump had 33 back when he voiced this thing, well, let's factor in what Lara Trump was able to bring in since she started, and that was, wow, oh my goodness, well, my math is not even right. You know what? I thought that number, Drew, was going to be 54, but it was actually 65.6 million. So let's just be conservative and call it 65 so now you're looking at $98 million, ladies and gentlemen. So that's $2 million ahead of where Joe Biden is. And then, dun dun guess what happened over the weekend in Mar-a-Lago? I'll let the Fox reporter take it away. Trump is calling it the biggest night in fundraising history. The fundraiser at hedge fund billionaire John Paulson's home raked in over $50 million, according to the RNC. That's up from early estimates of $43 million and nearly double what President Biden okay. raised at his New so, York City fundraiser. Wow. If he had 98 going into the weekend and he just added another 50, we're looking at 148 million dollars let's just round up and call it 150 okay and we'll give joe the benefit of the doubt he's got 96 million but we'll call him 100 you're looking at 100 to 150 and i'm telling you trump doesn't even need the money the way joe does the reason he doesn't need the money in the same way shape or form is one he's got that social media team you saw that eclipse <laughs> meme that they made earlier i mean these guys are good right so he's got that he's got just in general everyday folks that aren't on his team but are meme makers that are out there pushing him on social media you have sort of this groundswell moment so when he goes in and he does these big arena style events around the country with these rallies he just gets enormous tune in on networks online and then, of course, at the events themselves. And at these events, they use them as opportunities to rally more and more people and to get them to sign up to vote if they are not already registered. So these are big pockets of opportunities. And you're just able to kind of have more, how do they say, bang for your buck, right, with all of these events. So a big, big deal and really just remarkable, really, really, really remarkable to see. And so when I look at the money now, and I, I'm, I'm coming at it from the viewpoint that you don't even need as much money. I mean, maybe you do because you get so many legal bills. There you go. Okay. So you get, you get legal bills, right, to pay. And that's, of course, an issue. And so that takes and eats up some of the capital. 
But overall, he's now in a much better position than Joe Biden. Look, it could flip in the next couple of weeks. We'll see, because now the pressure is going to be on Biden. Oh, you know, you got to get more money. But at the end of the day, I will tell you this. Donald Trump won in 2016, not because he had more money than Hillary Clinton, but because people preferred him as a candidate. And I think that if he succeeds in in 20 in 20, can you believe this? We're in 2024. It's going to be for the same exact reason. We are still waiting on who is going to be the vice presidential pick. You know, it, there's a lot of names out there. It's a lot, you know, and I look at that and say, hey, this is really good because we need a deep bench. We need a great bench. You just saw Ron DeSantis. He's been out ahead of the whole transgender sports issue. He's certainly somebody that I think some people are still keeping an eye on. You got Marco Rubio also down in Florida. Why Marco Rubio is very connected with the Hispanic community. And there are a lot of stories now that are suggesting via the poll data that Hispanics might ultimately be the ones ones to decide this election. They're part of that group in the middle, but they're leaning right. They're leaning right and they're leaning towards Trump. Not exactly what the Democrats would have anticipated. But, you know, this is happening over and over and over again. I mean, we're seeing it in Pennsylvania as well, where they had these strongholds and they just anticipated and thought, oh, well, we got this community. We got this district. We got that. And guess what? They don't. They don't have it. They don't have it. And I don't think they're going to get it. And the reason is that ship has sailed because they're not connected to the everyday working American anymore. I mean, it's almost like the party's just sort of flipped. It's like the sort of traditional blue collar Democrat has now become the Trump supporter. And that's gonna take him far in a lot of places that the Democrats used to take for granted. And I understand why it's happening. I think you understand why it's happening too. It's because people don't feel like they have the same opportunity or advantages right now anymore. And the, the truth is they don't. It's, it's harder and harder to achieve the American dream. It's harder and harder to, to look towards something like retirement, which is one of the reasons why I started 76 Research. You guys who know me well, I, I hope you're part of the team over at 76. If not, make sure you go and you sign up. 76 research.com. We are out with another report. Of course, this Friday, um, actually, we've got a, an update coming for you on our inflation protected portfolio that I really would love you to read. Model portfolios there. We got the 76 report there and a lot of ideas for investing. If you want to just go check out the free stuff, I encourage you to go register at 76research.com. My financial letter there with Rob Horton, a wonderful friend and colleague now. I'm thrilled to to be on board with him. He and I have talked for many, many years. He's managed billions of dollars on Wall Street, and here I am doing the financial reporting thing. And we've talked for many years about the sort of inherent bias of all these institutions, not just government, which is obvious, but what you're seeing on Wall Street and then what you're seeing within the media space, specifically even the financial media space. And believe me, I know I've worked at Bloomberg, I've worked at Fox Business, and I've worked at CNBC. I also worked at MarketWatch. So the, the, the reality is, this exists. And I know it, he knows it. And it's the reason why we teamed up for 76research.com. It's my company that I'm thrilled in conjunction with him to have started. So go there, join, make sure that you're signed up for our emails, 76research.com, because you, you, you deserve a chance at a better future. You really do. And this is so important to me and so much why I started this.